Hola amigos, ¿qué tal? Stuart here from Spain Speaks with an update video. We'll have a, a chat about what's been happening here in Spain. We'll take a look at some of the stories in the international press today about Spain. So stay tuned for that. We've got some positive news and of course some negative news in the international press about Spain. So uh, that's what we're going to be talking about today. Now as you can see, it is a fantastic day. The end of winter almost. Only a few more days to go until we come to the end of winter and spring begins and uh, outside today enjoying the temperatures. Around 18, 19 degrees Celsius today I think is going to be the top. About 12, 13 currently, but uh, the sun is shining so it is keeping me warm as I stand outside here. And uh, we'll keep an eye on the building works that are going on over there. We'll see if there's any progress being made on the building of those houses over there. So uh, let's get straight into the news. And as we can see here, the first piece of news I can see from the Daily Express, so I know that this one is gonna be a negative story, and it says, Spain holiday warning as British tourists slammed in Mallorca, Malaga, and Tenerife. So I'm gonna click on this one to see what the story is about because I'm curious, I'm interested to see what this story is about. So let's have a look. We'll have a look at the subheading here. British tourists have been warned to get out of some of Spain's top holiday destination after a wave of protests. Wow, interesting. Haven't heard anything about this here in Spain, so we'll see what it is about. So let's read a couple of the paragraphs. Spain is one of the UK's leading holiday destinations and the country's visitor numbers are expected to soar beyond pre-pandemic levels this year. But British tourists aren't welcomed by everyone. Furious locals in leading destinations such as Tenerife, Malaga or Mallorca have put up posters telling tourists to get out. Now, the first thing I'm going to say here is that this is not only for British tourists, this is for tourists in general, because some people in these destinations that are mentioned here, Tenerife, Malaga, or Mallorca, are fed up with mass tourism, which is the Spanish model as we know. And there are signs going up in English because the people that come here, whether they're from the UK or whether they're from France or Germany or the Netherlands or wherever they come from, they're going to understand English. So you put up a sign in English in order for people to understand what that sign is. If you put it up in Spanish, no one's gonna understand what it is. So they put it up in English, but it's not directed only at British people. And again, this is a minority of people putting these signs signs up. These are minority groups, so nothing to be worried about there because the majority of people, and I'll say it again, the majority of people in this country understand just how important international tourism is in the places mentioned here. Again, I'll say them, Tenerife, Malaga, and Mallorca, three tourist hotspots here in Spain. Let's continue. A new campaign in Malaga has even seen posters telling tourists to while others have complained about housing being used for holiday lets. Now that's another problem, but again, that's a government issue. The government has to sort this out. You can't be blaming tourists for this problem. You have to blame local governments and also central governments for policies that are in place. If too many homes are being dedicated to short-term rentals, politicians have to sort it out. Don't blame tourists, it's not their fault. Now they talked to a local resident down here in Malaga, the person that is leading this anti-tourist campaign, a bar owner apparently called Danny Drunko, not sure if that's his real name or not, and uh, he's been putting graffiti up around the place telling tourists to leave. Stickers on buildings also that have slogans such as, this used to be my house and a family used to live here. So uh, Danny is on the war path. He told the local newspaper down there, Sword, I live in a neighborhood of Malaga called Fuente Olletas and was told a few weeks ago the owner would not be renewing my rental contract and I had to leave because the property was going to be readapted for tourist lets. So uh, this person peeved off with the amount of tourists because he's being kicked out of his home. But again, he has to speak to local politicians. What's the point of putting up anti-tourist graffiti because tourists don't care about this? Talk to local politicians, Danny. That would be my recommendation. And stop wasting your time with an ugly graffiti campaign. That would be my advice to you, Mr. Danny Drunko, if indeed that is your real name. Now, another negative story here about Spain, this time in GB News, another regular when it comes to negative stories about Spain.
Spain. And uh, thanks for John to bringing this one to my attention, sent me an email with this story. And uh, the headline, Spain tourist backlash, Britons will take money elsewhere as Spain proposes new rules on UK tourists. Now again, it's not only on UK tourists, it is on everybody that visits this country. But of course, GBN highlighting that it is only British tourists. So again, don't know what the story is there, but negative news, all part of the day-to-day -day for this press outlet, GB News. Let's read what it says. The Byline, a new initiative that could see Spanish bars and restaurants close early, has been hit with backlash, with concerns tourists will travel elsewhere on holiday. So obviously, this is talking about the uh, new rules and regulations that were proposed last week or the week before by the Labor Minister here, Yolanda Diaz. She just mentioned this, nothing has been done so far, but she suggested that perhaps bars and restaurants here in Spain need to change their opening hours to make it uh, fairer, let's say, for people working in that sector and uh, not be subjected to such long hours. But again, it was just a proposal, nothing is set in stone yet. But according to GB News, many Britons go on holiday to Spain to enjoy beautiful beaches, sunny weather, and exciting nightlife. But new rules could change how this is done. Plans to close bars and restaurants early across the country have been proposed, and tourists aren't happy with some even threatening to boycott Spain. So there we go. The Brits are threatening to boycott Spain because they won't be able to have dinner until 1 a.m., which is uh, what has been proposed. But again, nothing more has been mentioned on this topic by Yolanda. But the British press obviously picking up on the sensationalist side of the story. And uh, I'm going to say one thing. Uh, all of the times that I have been to these uh, British hotspots here in Spain, I haven't seen any British people having dinner after 9 p.m. In fact, you see a lot of people sticking to their timetables, their UK timetables, having dinner around 6, 7, 8 p.m. Spanish people, yes, have dinner quite late, but I don't see a lot of British tourists in particular having dinner so late. And another thing about this possible proposal is that I don't think that it affects night spots. So if you're looking to get a late night drink, that is still gonna be available here in Spain. So again, sensationalist news trying to throw rubbish on Spain, which is typical of the two press outlets that I have looked at today, GB News, and of course, the Daily Express. They'll do anything in their power to throw rubbish on this country. The slightest piece of negative news is highlighted in articles like this one, unfortunately. Now, let's continue and let's try to find a positive piece of news. Let's uh, scroll up here. There's one about Asturias, which is in the north of Spain in the Financial Times. Let's click on this one because it's caught my attention. And uh, the headline of the article says here, Asturias, why Spain's cool coast is summer's hot destination. So uh, again, picking up on the fact that the south of Spain is getting very, very hot indeed in the summer months, and people are looking for cooler destinations. Spanish people have been doing this for years. People in places like Madrid or other central parts of the country have been heading to Asturias, Galicia, Cantabria, the Basque country, looking for cooler weather. And of course, now the international press is all over this. So let's have a look at what the article says. Every year it happens, and it's getting worse. By mid-July, the Spanish countryside has settled into its frazzled, heat-exhausted, high summer look, and I too begin to feel similarly frazzled and exhausted as if the parched air is sucking the moisture from my very soul. Thankfully, the remedy is simple. At the close of July, when I can stand it no longer, I climb into my car and head north from my home in Extremadura, traversing the dusty plains of Castile and the bleak mountains of Leon, before arriving in what has become my summer happy place, the verdant, rugged, often chilly, always well-watered region officially known as the Principality of Asturias. So this is obviously a journalist living here in Spain, living in Extremadura. Let me see if I can find his name. Yes, Paul Richardson, and uh, a person who prefers the north of the country to the south of the country to spend their summer vacations. As I said, nothing new for locals here. They have been doing it for years, but now international tourism, of course, because of articles like this one, is going to be heading to places like Asturias. And uh, I don't know whether the locals there are gonna be happy or not, because I don't think they are used to this type of mass tourism. And if lots of English people start going there, if lots of German people start going there, if lots of other Northern Europeans start going there, it's going to get very 
very, very crowded indeed. And another thing about the north of the country is that it doesn't have the tourist infrastructure that you'll find in the south. And uh, that could be an issue. A lot of the towns and villages in Asturias are quite small. They don't have hotels. Yes, they have rural accommodation, but good luck trying to get into that if a lot of people start heading to those destinations for their summer holidays. That's all I've got to say on this. You could go to Galicia, of course. Galicia is better prepared, I think, for summer tourism. There's places like San Xenxo, places like Porto Novo in Galicia, which also have the same climate as Asturias, roughly, not exactly the same, of course, but roughly the same, uh, not as hot. And you can find more accommodation options in places like, as I said, San Xenxo or Porto Novo in uh, the south of Galicia in Pontevedra. So uh, keep that in mind. But if you're going to Asturias, make sure you book your accommodation early because it can be hard to find, or at least uh, that's my opinion. Now on that note, I'm gonna wrap the video up. Questions and comments, please leave them in the section below. If you have anything to add to the conversation today, please, the comment section is the place for you. Give the video a thumbs up if you liked it, thumbs down if you didn't. Hasta luego from a sunny, albeit a little bit cloudy, Madrid. Bye-bye.